Hey folks, welcome to part one of a series on MuseScore, the free and open source music notation editing software. So we're going to start with making a new file. I am going to assume that you're starting from complete nothing in here, and we're going to go command N to open a new file. I'm going to call this keyboard entry tutorial. We're going to go to choose instruments. We're going to type in piano. We want a regular piano with two staffs, treble and bass clef. That's awesome. Continue. I'm going to make this piece in F major just for fun. Um, we're going to start with 4-4 four, four time signature. We're not going to use a pickup measure. I'm going to show you how to add that later manually because that seems to be an, an issue a lot of people have. And I'm going to start with just eight measures to keep it all real tidy. I want to see the tempo. It makes it a little more convenient to change it later. Done. And great. I have this. Getting around, I can just click and drag the score this way. I always do that with the middle mouse button, but the, the first mouse button or the middle mouse button works. If you're on a trackpad, you can just click and drag. And we're going to start with the basics of keyboard-based note entry. MuseScore uses a kind of two mode system where we have note entry mode when we click this and we see that blue cursor and we see a blue note and editing mode. And when we're in editing mode, we don't see either of those things and we can click around and freely edit whatever we want. I'm gonna press in, that's how I get into note entry mode. I can also click this button up here. We select note duration with number keys. Five is your starting point, five is quarter notes. If we go up, six, you can see that the half note is selected, seven, the whole note is selected, the dot selects the dot, and we can dot anything we want. Four is our eighth note, three is our sixteenth note. So typically, most of the time, you're using three, four, five, six, seven. I'm gonna begin by putting in an F major scale, um, starting with a half note followed by quarter notes. So I'm gonna press six for a half note, F for my first note, I'm going to press F5 for quarter notes. I'm going to press G, A, B, C, D, E, and I want to end on a whole note. If you want to hear what you've put in, you can click on that measure where you want to start, press the space bar, and music is going to play that back. Okay, so how do I edit this? Let's say I want to change something. I don't want the scale. I can press the N key to get back to editing mode where this is turned off. I'm not in note entry mode. You don't see the blue box. And now when I click on these or use the arrow keys, left and right to get around, I can move these notes by using the up and down keys. And we can also hear this happening as we go. I can use uh, down to add a flat. I can use up to move by half step. If I wanted an E sharp here for some reason, I would have to click the sharp button or create a hotkey for adding a sharp, not just moving up and down in half steps with the arrow keys, but we don't want any sharp there. So if I want to change the note length, I can press the new note length that I want. I want this to be a dotted quarter note. I'm gonna press a dot and look at that. The note after it also becomes a quarter, an eighth note, it becomes an eighth note. So we don't have to uh, worry about fixing that. Sometimes that doesn't happen. It's not, it doesn't know what you're thinking. So sometimes you'll have to do things manually. If I change this B to a 16th note with the three key, it's gonna leave in the space after it. I can change these. And I can change that to a D. I can move it down by an octave with the command key. I can move it around with the arrow keys and you can hear the notes you're on. And you can quickly Scroll through melodies note by note and hear the notes in order. Da. And then if you, again, if you want to hear it play back, you click on that and press space bar. You can also loop a selection. You hold the shift key and you select how much you want to loop. And it's going to give us that section looped so I can hear it over and over again. Sometimes I'll do this, I'll write an ostinato out, and then while that plays back in my headphones, I'll move around on the keyboard to work on the rest of my kind of idea. Another common question I've seen is how do I move things from staff to staff? One way is to Command-C, Copy, Command-V, Paste, and then if I want to 
move that down an octave again, I would just press command down and now it's in the different octave. We can also move things from one staff to another on the same instrument by using shift command. And then I would have to go command down to get it into an octave where I would actually want it. But shift command moves between staves. How do we put in rests? We can change a note to a rest by pressing zero. If we're typing a melody and we want a rest, let's start a new section here. Five, dot, I want a quarter note, C, followed by an eighth note rest, four, zero, four, I want uh, an E, C, A, and I want some sixteenth notes, G, E. That's how we type in rest using the zero key. If we want a tied rhythm, if I want a dotted quarter note, and then a quarter note tied to any other rhythm. I select that rhythm while I'm still in note entry mode and I press the plus button. Now I've got an eighth note tied to an eighth note and I can put another eighth note after that and another quarter note. I'm gonna tie that to a whole note. So I'm gonna press seven for whole note and press the plus key. And then I have automatically created a tie over the bar line. If you want to slur, you can select a group of notes using the shift key, click the first note, hold shift and click the last note. And then when I press S, it adds a slur. Let's talk a little bit about how you have multiple melody lines. So I want a pedal point on an F here. I'm gonna move it down low, I'm gonna tie it to a bunch of more Fs. I just want a pedal point like that. Now, voices are an important concept in MuseScore and in most music notation software. They're similar to layers in Photoshop or image editing software, if you're familiar with that one. If we go to note entry mode and then press R2, now we're entering notes on a new layer, a new voice. So we're gonna press four for some eighth notes and I just want some little and forth. Just want a little pattern with these notes going back and forth. I want to select that little voice and I want to move it up an octave and then I want to move those down an octave. Now, how about this slur being on the wrong side of things? What would I do to fix that? We're going to use the hotkey to change stem direction. If you can't remember a hotkey, press command, comma, and you're gonna bring up the shortcuts menu. You can type anything into this box to find a hotkey. Flip direction is X. I'm gonna select those notes. I don't want them pointing up. I'm holding Command right now. I'm gonna press X to flip that. And I could do the same with these notes if I wanted to. Now, as you can see, when I select a box of, of measures here, I'm getting both voices. And that brings us to another important tool in MuseScore, the selection filter. You cannot see it by default. You can pull it up from the view menu or you can press F6. F6 shows and hides our selection filter. This looks complicated. It's got options for pretty much everything that you can type, but the important ones are at the top. If I want to select only voice two, I'm gonna turn off voice one and now I can select these measures and just get voice two. And I'm gonna press X to point that up. That's typically what you want is the two parts on a staff to point in opposite directions to make it easier to read. Let's talk about the palette a little bit. I've got this funky little tune here. Let's not talk about it, but we're gonna to go to add some dynamics. I'm going to add a crescendo here. The typical way to add a crescendo in this software is to select all the notes where you want the line to be visible. We go to lines, which is where our, anything that looks like a line is, and we choose that marking. Now, this is going over a bar line. I don't actually like that. I'm going to put it under these two notes so that we are crescendoing to this beginning of this measure and my dynamics menu is right here and I want a forte there 
and I want a piano here. So let's say I want to accent this note. I can look at my articulations and I can click the accent. Well, again, while I'm in editing mode, we're not in note entry mode. Click the accent and it shows up right there. If I want to get rid of it, I have to delete it. Those are not toggles. There are hotkeys for some articulations and dynamics. So again, if I type in accent into my hotkeys menu, you get here by pressing command comma, going to shortcuts. Shift V is accent. Shift S is staccato. How about dynamics? There's, if I type dynamics, um, there don't seem to be any for those, but oh yeah, crescendo and decrescendo are greater than and less than size. So again, I don't know every hotkey. I often look for the ones I want. The ones you use, you'll start to remember. So again, shift V is an accent. And if I want these to be staccato, I can use the shift key to select all of them. Da, 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 right? And then I'm gonna do shift S for staccato. Da, 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 da. Let's see how that sounds. And it'll actually, yeah. So it'll play these back to you the way that you tell it to, to, a, to an extent. It's not gonna do everything exactly right. You'll hear some dynamics. Last thing I wanna cover is inharmonic spellings. You can cycle through spellings of notes by selecting multiple notes or one note at a time and pressing J. It's gonna give you all the different ways to type those. So for example, if this is a G sharp and this is an A flat and this is a B sharp, I get there by clicking that sharp symbol. It looks, you know, kind of crazy. Why would we want that? And J cycles through these, all, you know, all these possibilities. And what I typically do when I'm editing something, if I type it in fast, there might be some crazy in harmonic spelling if it's in a different key signature or if it's very chromatic music. I'll do this until it looks approachable. And then I'll go through and manually change them to what I have, whatever I actually want. For now, I'm going to go back that way. So hopefully that is helpful if you're just starting out in this software or if you've been using it for a while. Hopefully there's something there that'll help you move a little quicker. The next video, we're going to get into more advanced keyboard entry, adding chords, adding lyrics, using the inspector, which we did not get, in, get into at all in this video, but it gives you a lot of detailed options over here. We're also going to get into the advanced note entry modes, including the very useful rhythm mode, the repitch mode. Insert can be very useful. You can stick, mellow, stick new rhythms in before a note to make it easier to kind of edit things um, edit rhythms as you're thinking through them. So we'll get into those next time. Thank you so much for watching. Consider supporting me on Patreon. If you like this kind of content, you can contribute as little as a dollar a month, and it really does help keep it, keep the energy flowing for creating these kind of videos. Thank you so much.